Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tom Thorne from Heretical History, and I'd like to welcome you to this first introductory podcast in a series called Approaches to History. What we're going to be doing in this series is introducing you to the ways that we can think about history in kind of a conceptual and thematic way that will make it a lot easier for us to analyze and approach, hence the name, Approaches to History, to analyze and approach what we're going to be talking about in subsequent episodes when we get to the kind of meatier and more substantial topics. So, I am a fan of history, and I have no pretensions to being a professional historian. I will admit right off the bat, I am not a PhD holder. In fact, I am only 18 years old and have yet to graduate high school. I freely admit this. So right on, you know, right right on the table there for you to understand is that everything I say should be taken with a grain of salt. I am not a professional historian, but I do like to think, and I think with good reason, that I know quite a lot about history. It's my passion. It's something that I spend nearly all of my free time doing when I'm not with the family or the girlfriend. I'm usually burying my nose in a book because I'm a total nerd, and I freely admit this again. So, that's who I am, and I'm just doing this podcast because I love history, and I know there are a lot of other people out there who also love history, but there are even more people in the world who should love history and don't. And the reason they don't is no fault of their own. The reason most people think of history as this kind of boring, banal, and irrelevant subject is because in school, where most of us learn history, history is almost always taught as a boring, banal, and irrelevant subject. We learn history as a series of, I like to call it a series of shit that happened. It's This approach to history that we get in school is basically... Um, you know, Alexander the Great conquered Persia in the year whatever it was I don't have on hand, and Napoleon became dictator of France in 1799 AD, and it's like, well, who cares? I don't. I, I could not care less that Alexander the Great conquered Persia in the 4th century BC, or that or that Napoleon became the emperor of France in a particular year of the 18th century, doesn't matter to me. And it shouldn't matter to anyone. Because those little facts are not what makes history significant. And I think people intuitively know this, which is why, when we are given the series of shit that happened approach to history in school, when we are told to memorize a bunch of names and dates and places that have almost no meaning to us, a lot of people are just turned off, and I can't blame them. I really can't. So, no matter who you are, whether you are kind of a disillusioned high school or college graduate who was forced to learn history in the shit that happens method, or whether you are an impassioned history nerd like me, or maybe, in a third option, you might just be someone who's kind of passing by. You found this podcast on iTunes and you figured, hey, I may as well check out a little bit of history in a, in a different way. Looking at history in a lens that you may not have learned in school, or you certainly haven't learned in school, because the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about here goes way above and beyond anything that you would have been taught in the classroom. And that's good. It's fun. It's going to be really interesting, because the approach that we take to history, here on Heretical History, is not just the basic who, what, where, and when approach that you were probably taught in school. That stuff is important as a factual basis for analysis and understanding, which is where the real meat of history comes in. So I like to think of understanding history as kind of a three-step approach. It's almost like a pyramid, where the base level of that pyramid is the facts, or what we think are the facts, because of course we can never be totally certain that what we learn from the sources is true, but to the best of our knowledge, 
the empirical, scientific, factual information is the who, what, where, and when, the basic stuff. After we've understood that first level and come to as much of a consensus as we can about what actually happened in history, we can move on to the second level of analysis and understanding, which is where it becomes much more interesting. This second level, as I like to call it, is where we ask why and how. These are analytical questions that look at cause and effect. They're interested in seeing why things happened the way they did. In other words, why they came about, not in a different way, but in the way that we believe actually happened. And how? What was the process by which those events came into being? What was the, the method or the approach that people in the past took to bringing about their goals and effectuating the change that we understand? So that's the second level, the analysis. And then the third level, the third and final pinnacle of the pyramid of history, as I would like to call it, is the significance. Why do we give a damn, is the question we should be asking whenever we look at history. It's cool to know why and how something happened, but it's way more important and way more meaningful to each and every one of us, even if you are not remotely interested in history for its own sake. It is far more important than anything else to ask, why do we care? Why do we give a damn about Napoleon becoming the emperor of revolutionary France or Alexander the Great conquering Persia? Why does it matter? And this is the answer that we are going to be seeking in every podcast from now on. This is the question we will be asking and attempting to resolve. Why do we care? about anything in history. Why should it matter to us, living in our 21st century world, what happened thousands of years ago? I'll tell you it does matter, and we're going to figure out why as we move forward into the more kind of meaty and substantial podcasts. But for now, suffice it to say that this is the approach we will be taking. It's way more interesting, just trust me from experience, and you will experience it for yourself. It is way more interesting and engaging to take this approach to history that looks at cause and effect, that looks at motivation and drive, and the way people behave and why and how they behave the way they do, and most importantly, why it matters to us. It is way more interesting to take this approach to history than to simply sit down with a textbook and start copying. So that's what this show, Heretical History, is going to be about. But as for this series, which is probably going to be a ten-part introductory series, Approaches to History, what we're going to be talking here over the next nine episodes is laying down the conceptual and thematic framework through which we can view history. Because as soon as you start delving into the sources of history, as soon as you start looking at the materials, the evidence that's available to us, you know, the who, what, where, when, and why, uh, sorry, who, what, where, when kind of stuff, the, uh, the, the basics, the facts, as soon as you start delving into that, you are going to find that it is impossible to swim in that sea of information without some kind of life raft called a theory. Now, this is really dangerous, because what many, I would even say most historians, fall prey to doing is really tempting, but really wrong. What many or even most historians end up doing when they approach history 
is they'll look at the facts and they'll say, oh god, this is so overwhelming, what do I do? And so they'll come up with a theory. But then, when they go back to the facts with that theory, they will start to pick and choose. Because it's only natural, right? When you become attached to a theory, when you become an attached to a way of thinking, you want to hold on to it at all costs. It's just kind of in our nature as people. We like to think that what we believe is right, and once we've come up with a belief, it is very hard for most people to shake themselves out of it, even when the facts do not hold up to the theory. And so what we are going to be doing rigorously, and please send me emails at hereticalhistory at gmail.com, I'll repeat that at the end of the episode, um, if you don't believe at any point in this, uh, in this entire show that I, am, that I am holding true to this method of applying the theory to fit the facts rather than picking and choosing the facts to fit the theory. Because what we have to do as historians is act like scientists. Now, obviously, we can't be truly empirical scientists. We can't repeat tests in a scientific method in the way that real, like, biologists or physicists or chemists can do that. Because we don't have laboratories. We have primary sources, as the historical facts are called. We don't have, um, you know, we, we don't have a way of replicating what happened in the past. We have to go by the facts and the information that is available to us. But once it is, we can start to form theories out of our understanding of the facts. And what we have to do to not fall prey to the fallacy I just described, what we have to do is modify the theory as we go along to fit the facts. So we will probably find, as we start discussing the real meat and juice of history, the stuff that makes it really cool and interesting, what we will start to find is that the facts don't always conform with what we want to think is true. And so, when the facts contradict to the theory, we have to reshape the theory to conform to the facts, because the facts are what is real, and if we're not attaching ourselves to reality, then we're just making up BS. And of course, there's no value in doing that as a historian. So that's just kind of a warning or caveat as to how we'll be approaching history in a sane and rational and somewhat scientific manner that will allow it to make a lot more sense for us as we move forward. Anyway, the ultimate reason that we're taking this whole approach to history of analysis and understanding and trying to figure out the how and the why and the who gives a damn is that it allows us to figure out how the world works, which you'll notice is the title of this podcast. Because that is really what history is about. How the world works. And how the world has worked in the past. It's not always easy to figure this out. I understand that. I sure as hell don't know how the world works which is why it may seem a little pretentious when I say this podcast is how the world works. I'm not answering that question. I'm asking that question. And I think together we will come closer and closer to a complete and cohesive answer through studying history together and through enjoying history together, through finding information as well as entertainment in the past. So thank you for joining me. My name is Tom Thorne. Once again, my email is hereticalhistory, no spaces, all lowercase, no punctuation, hereticalhistory at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next time.